Hi everybody, my name is Ernest AJ Watching. Once again, I just want to thank everybody for watching my videos. Have you ever wondered why you've been praying over the same situation over, over and over again, but nothing seems to happen? Have you ever wondered why God seems to keep no ear to your prayers? So the main Bible verse for it will be Matthew 6, verse 5, when Jesus Christ was teaching his disciples not to just pray, but to follow a five-step systematic approach. When, uh, when you read Matthew 6, verse 9, Jesus Christ emphatically said, this is how you should pray. This is how you should pray. So you can refer to Matthew 6, verse 9, Jesus Christ said, this is how you should pray. He didn't say you can pray in this way. He said this is how. So it means every prayer must go through this five, these five step systematic approaches. Okay. Now, the first step. When you want to call on anybody, when you want to refer to anybody, you have to refer to them in specific. That is why we have names. So if, for instance, if you want to call Joseph, and there are two Josephs around. You have to go further to tell which Joseph you are calling. And uh, when you read 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, because the Bible says Satan is the God of the earth, when you are calling on God, if you just say God, because God, the God that we say, the pronunciation is the same God as the pagans would call their God. Whichever language we use, for instance, if a Ghanaian says, Nyame, it is the same Nyame as an idol worshiper would say. Okay, so when you read Matthew 6, verse 10, the first step, it says, invite the presence of God. Matthew 6, verse 10, when Jesus Christ was teaching them to pray, he said, Our Father, because Satan is the God of the earth, and Jesus Christ was on the earth. Once he says, Our Father, Satan could claim it. That is why Jesus Christ went on to further say, Who is in heaven? So number one, when you invite the presence of God, you have to call in specific which God you want to pray to. Because prayer is the communication between man and God. So you mention in specific which God, the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, the God who created, you know, you have to be specific in which God, lest Satan will claim the prayers. So that's the first procedure. Number two. Once you invite the presence of God, you have to give him the praises, exalt him. That is why Jesus Christ said in Matthew 6 from verse 10 going that Jesus Christ said, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. You know, Jesus Christ was trying to make God feel good, feel at home. He was trying to exalt him, just like any um, people would exalt their king, their chiefs, their pastors. You know, so when number one, when you invite the presence of God, number two, you need to exalt Him, praise Him, give Him, give Him all the adorations. All right, number three, the Bible says, sing the praises from the love of God. So, um, God is so holy to dwell among sinners or sin, and because we are human. The, there are certain things, maybe the, thing, the, the things you might see, the things you may say, the things you might hear. When Jesus came to the rescue of the adulterous woman, Jesus said, He who is without sin should cast the first stone. Jesus never said, He who has never committed adultery, which means sin is sin. There is nothing like a small sin. There is nothing like a bigger sin or a small sin. So, when uh, the third procedure you have to follow, is to ask for forgiveness of sin. Ask for Jesus, ask for the Lord, ask for God to forgive you, to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. When you read James 5:16, it says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James 5:16b it said, if he said, confess of sins to one another, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man. So which means for your prayers to be heard, for your prayers to be effective, you have to be a righteous man. Who is a righteous man? A person without sin. So number three, ask the Lord to cleanse you of any sins. Pray to ask for forgiveness of sins. So um, just a recap. 
Number one, you invite the presence of God. Number two, you exalt Him, you magnify Him. Then, number three, you ask for forgiveness of sin. Okay. When you read number four, the fourth step is making your request known to Him. When you read Philippians 4, 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in anything with prayer. Prayer is the communication between man and God. With supplication, subduing yourself, and then thanksgiving, make your request known to God. That is why in that is why in the second step we thanked him, we exalted him. Because James and uh, Philippians 4 says is trying to tell you that even before you make your request known to God, you have to thank him. So now the fourth step is to tell him why you are praying. That is the in a letter they would say it is the body of your prayer. So the fourth step is to make your request known to God. Tell him why you are calling on him. Tell him what is going on. Tell him what you want him to do for you. So that is the fourth step. Okay. Now, the fifth step, which is the final step. Uh, when you read the latter part of Jesus' prayer, the Lord's prayer, it says, and, um, it says, and lead us not into temptation, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. So the fifth and the final step is to commit the rest of your life to God. Ask Him to take absolute dominance of your situation. If the God, as He is about to release the blessings, as He is about to answer your prayers, then you need to ask Him to protect you. That is why Jesus said, deliver us from evil. So the fifth step, which is the final step, is to ask for the protection of God. Allow Him to take absolute dominance over your situation. Beloved, thank you for watching this video. I pray in the name of Jesus that it will be a blessing to many. I pray in the name of Jesus that every prayer, every prayer that you say will go through this format. Because mind you, Matthew 6 verse 9, Jesus emphatically, Jesus specifically said, this is how you should pray. So every prayer has to go through that format, lest you deviate. So I pray that um, it will be a blessing unto many. Um, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter the length of your prayer. Even if you are praying to it, even if it has to be a short prayer, it still has to go through that five-step systematic approach. Please follow me on Facebook and stay watching. May the Lord bless you. Um, I have one recommendation. Just in case you want to pray, 